pleasure having everyone here today. And in the next 45 to 60 minutes, I will be sharing what has been a passion of mine for many, many years. And I hope that it will be a small passion of yours. That's what I love it. But that's one goal, of course. The other goal is I am hoping I can share with you what is now kind of becoming table stakes in today's economy. Either for the future, you would want to get it. It's very, it's very weird having you all the way back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, which are the company? So I'm hoping you will leave here with not only a few ideas you can start trying for this life, maybe if you, if you have a subject, it's how we are going and start doing this for what we're talking about. Or maybe tomorrow or next week. However, you're going to leave here with love clarity of the options that is in front of you. Either you are doing something or you want to do something else, or you are saying you're not doing anything right now, and you say, I need the next thing to do. My hope is that you will leave here today with that clear. Because the reason for this is, as you all know, individuals of color are becoming more impacted. Even as tech is going fast, we are at a higher tendency of being left behind. And that's part of the action and the work that you are really doing. Many of you are doing a little bit of my own personal work. So I invite you, I'm Billy Touch, by the way, instructor, and app developer, and author. And I've been in the industry for going about 15 years. So I've been doing this. And I'm hoping you are going to come along. And then you enjoy the journey. If after today you find many of what we share interesting, some of you are probably already part of it, we will be starting a program that goes in depth many of what will be getting you excited about today. Even if you say I'm not going to do the MSIMBO coding academy, which goes about 20 weeks, you can do your own thing because a lot of what I'll share with you today. At least can pursue your own. The great thing, of course, that you get with being in a program that we do here is the fact that you get expert guidance, you get some support from the league, and we help to, again, the curriculum is designed by myself and with the team we work with, we have to help to streamline your journey to hopefully accelerate. So that's what I'm here today. So we're going to go around the table real quick and you share what you're hoping to get out of today. Maybe a quick intro of your name and maybe you already said your name. But just quick intro one word. We just want to say something about what you're hoping to get. Because I could be flexible, even though I have all this, but get you know, be flexible with how we pay level so you get the best value for the next 45 minutes. Fair? Now, how you start? Um, my name's Ashley, and I hope. What I would like to get out of this is a lot of um, the experience and knowledge and to educate you more on the coding and what's behind the scenes of how we build these apps and understand a lot of the technology things that are coming. Fair enough. I think we're going to check that out. My name is Steve Warrington. <laughs> um, I, I, what I was your last name? Warrington. Warrington, because we have two Stevens, so we can get <laughs> So Warrington, we're a W, right? Yes. So I'll say Stephen W, and I won't get to yours. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I mean, I know now is not a time to really get a foundation. So just like the title of this course says, is an introduction, you know, to uh, kind of understand what coding is all about. You know, I'm, I'm 52 now, so when I was growing up, we were very, very young. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, when I was really, really young, coming up in school, you know, this really wasn't an option. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, um, and uh, so it kind of like, you know, the young people coming up now today, this is kind of like normal to them. They, you know, they're into computers and stuff like that. So that's always been kind of like a far reach. But I don't, I don't want to be now at this age. I want to take on uh, different things, you know. Uh, things that seem a little bit uh, challenging. I don't want to shy away from that. And this is where everything is going. Everything is technology. Now. So I want to I want to really understand it, uh, get a little foundation of it, and then explore um, how to um, get even more comfortable with it. And 
plus, I, you know, I'm looking for something like this because I developed something during the pandemic, a, a trading platform that I'm looking to uh, transfer to some type of uh, software because I want to have a real good foundation understanding of how it works. So Stephen, don't do it. Stephen, you answer that. That age is not a barrier to many other things. Either it's in terms of the complex, you know, what it might seem to be. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would argue because the MCMO program caters to adults. And when I was designing the curriculum, it was designed with adults in mind because mm -hmm. many adults already have life experience. They can transfer right. easily mm -hmm. to a different context, which is what a lot of learners do. So I hope, I want you to keep in mind because there's going to be two paths that are going to go through this. And I want you to pay very close attention in how I talk about to your trading platform, by the way. I'm gonna talk about how, even before we build anything, how do we even come up with a concept mm -hmm. of finding what we want to do? Because many of you using apps on your phone, you see the finished results, that's what you see. Which we're gonna end up with something happy. You see the finished results, but there has been probably 80% of the maintenance, which is often finding what to build, figuring out if it's gonna be a good idea, Figuring out the tools you will even use. The shortcut, of course, is how we should talk about the tools, but all those goes into it mm -hmm. before you now say, okay, these are the tools, not going to So it's often great. In if you have life experience that knowing tech is great, and you can have a lot of other roles that they do not about you building the thing, but you having the what is called domain expertise, in this case, life knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To apply to it. And when we talk about skipping some family that we're skipping already, I will speak to how this might not apply to maybe I work previously with a videographer, you know, as a photographer, mm -hmm. and now I know how to cook. Well, that actually gives me a lot of better expertise in code to work on a photography application because I know the problem of a photographer that if I'm just a, some kid who just knows how to cook, who does not understand that, oh, this is what an aperture is, or this is what a focal is. Which you can grasp very quickly and say, okay, this is why this is not good for you. So that's the way I wanted to think about as we go through this. Um, I'm Julian. Um, so back in 2019, I started a company uh, to import and export coffee. Okay. Um, so during the pandemic, I was working on uh, building a website. Um, <laughs> I found a lot, a lot of limitations on the, on the regal. It's sort of like, uh, Free pay websites right, okay. where you can build it off of the, their platform. Okay. I found a lot of limitations where like I couldn't put a paywall on uh, things, things of that nature. Um, and then I have some ideas for an application that's going to go alongside the website. So I'd like to you know, eventually make that a reality so I can have my application and people can order coffee from the application. And it can also be on the website. So, Julian, two things. I hope, of course, you will share some coffee with me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have brought some. <laughs> because, in fact, as we speak, I have to be buying coffee from because I tried some coffee somewhere and I could not. It's, I could not get the fill out of my mouth. So I'm kind of that much of a coffee person. Mm -hmm. So I hope you can pay this back by just giving me some <laughs> coffee. <right? laughs> so that's one. Um, two, the same as I said to Stephen with me, is that. You will enjoy this session where I share with you how to build websites from scratch very, very quickly. Of course, we have 45 minutes and we have to build a mobile app because we're going to be able to buy That's why I have you have your phone. And you would be surprised of all these tricks that professional developers know. Oh, are you so late? Okay, you can come forward. You can, I, I would teach you, I'll take you into that secret corner that okay. professionals know. That most amateurs take forever, either they don't know it exists. And it's just that small little truth that I'm hoping that after today, you're going to go back and start working on your coffee application. I hope so. Too. What? I hope so too. Okay, so we'll get there. Yes. Oh, my name is Edward. Um, last year, a partner and I started a creative agency. Okay. To develop the application. Um, I got to pitch the application to investors, but I was trying. Are you going to teach me how to find API? I didn't plan to, but I could talk to him. That's why I'm saying I could be very flexible. Okay, all right. Because I, I could, you know, I'm just trying to see where everyone are. Just figure out if I've covered all the things in there. 
It's out of the scope of what we'll talk about, but I could I could squeeze it in. I'm gonna take what I can. I just wanted to have some knowledge so that um when I give them the wireframe back, I can at least uh speak the same language. And are you so you are designing or what? Um that's what I'm doing. Sorry? I, I have no idea. Oh, yeah. you're gonna love to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what we're gonna start because our application, we're gonna design it ourselves. Well, you will see me design design it. And, and in fact, I'm using design in code, and you will see me code it in code. Because we're going to do those small little tricks, right? Ooh, so we'll see how that, that's why I asked about the application that you use. So that would be about, about to design about web apps from scratch at least. Yes. Um, Stephen Julian Stewart. Um, what I'm so I'll say Stephen J. Well, you're going to both of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. What I'm looking at is just like a over here. Um, Coding is something that I want to do, like the uh, branches of Transcore. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I just kind of just uh, you know, creating like more so like small applications or small projects that are like feasible for anybody to use as a fun use. And then, um, then I would make kind of more of a deep dive into like maybe like a project that is focused towards like videography or, some, uh, or photography. But at the moment, I definitely want to just create feasible things that people can use. So maybe like something like an API. Remind me, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna spill the beans yet, but there is a lot of trend that is happening right now that is based on what is called micro apps. But mm -hmm. just so that see, not micro transaction, but micro apps. I will speak to that a little bit. In fact, uh, Stephen W, this is actually where if you have domain expertise, let's say you know, mm -hmm. when I when I use the word domain expertise, maybe you are doing whatever, maybe you're a barber. I you now want to start writing code. Micro apps is kind of becoming a trend. In fact, if you play games quite a lot, you will know that that's kind of how almost every game make their money. In this case, it's called microtransaction, but in this case, bringing that to application. And we'll talk about why um, as we evolve something about micro apps, especially if you want to do your own thing, like you're doing your own stuff. Though yours, you're in a business, you want to complement you with an application to help you more efficient. But if you want to be like a software entrepreneur, it's kind of the place to be. I want to put my time you know, but I'm not, I, I want a SaaS company as well. The software is going to come. Okay. Okay, finally, uh, before we move on, let's a quick introduction. Uh, what are you hoping to get up today? Uh, my name is Rochelle Shikoti, and I received this information because I think I have some people favoring me. Um, I've been in the professional technology finance space for a very long time, and so I just like need to keep up with my skills. So I just love to learn. So and I get twenty a twenty year old that's always telling me, Mama, well, you don't know how to do some tech stuff, you don't know how to do it. so I work. hopefully after today you have a bunch of jabber to throw back at me. <laughs> so, at the app is that do you know this? And and let it look at really confusion. Now let's answer an important question. I think I can name that. Rochelle should go here. Okay. So you've all, I've shared your goals here. I, I'm gonna answer, or I'm gonna answer this important question. I know you've all thought about why should you learn to build apps? And the obvious answer might be, oh, because I want to, you know, start writing code. I want to build something for my company. I want to do this And those are all true, in fact. I'm gonna share with you that there is a more solid thing that applies to why you want to learn. So anyway, many of what I will teach you today and the skills you will start applying from tonight, if you will, is that it positions us to have a skill that makes us continually relevant. Not to be a coder, not to be a coder. But let me take us back. I mean, many of you, I'm sure, for example, Stephen uh, W and Rochelle, right? mm -hmm. I'm sure you both might probably be older than myself. So you might know this a little bit about tech. Back in the day, many, many years ago, being a typist was a professional job, which you have to go to school for, and you get hired to be a typist. You buy the typewriter. I remember the one that grandfather hired his first secretary to be a typist. That's what she was doing, typing letters, doing all those things. Smells awful, but that's what she was doing. 
I think we all can agree to that, that there is no one who can understand the professional type. Even if you have the only kind of high professional type, to be honest. So type typing on a keyboard has become a skill that everyone kind of expects. Just as you, if I put if you're applying for a role, you're not gonna put there that you know how to type. If I didn't think that you're drunk, <laughs> they, they would assume, of course, you should know how to type. Right. And even though coding is not that today, in the, in a few years. In fact, that's what coding would be. Where I just kind of strange to hear that coding, I'm comparing coding to being a pilot. And that's why learning to build apps is similar to today, learning to maybe write a good novel on the phone. Now, of course, if you're going to write a novel back, then you have, have pen and paper that you give to a professional typist to so type it for you. But today you can sit behind your screen and you know how to type a movie with your paper picking, but you know how to do it and you can produce something. So you have a fundamental skill that allows you to produce into this future that you are using Google, Google search and all sort of stuff. It has this fundamental basis that you know how to type. Not the virus, but we're going to do a few shifts that the coding itself is almost like you're learning to type. The building of the app is you now learning a skill that will be fundamental for that future. Remember, our goal when we leave it is not that we are trying to become software coders or whatever. To be sure that's a professional role, to be sure that we know that we're eventually losing our relevance, but this is how we share with you in a bit. However, as an adult, that's why I said being having domain knowledge is actually going to be a great thing for many folks where you can, you have this skill. It's almost like I have the idea for a fantastic song I want to write. I can't, maybe I can't do much about it because I'm going to to play an instrument. So I'm just going to sit in the corner and just think about this idea. But think about having the capacity to maybe sing and rap and I have a good idea. You can just do and make my song and I'm done. You can see the difference, right? And that's how I want to think about why you want to learn this skill. Not to be a professional software engineer, but in fact, to have that skill that lets you pursue what is the next phase. We've had, if our COVID accelerator, so we have the pre-COVID world and we have the post-COVID world. And many people are kind of still living in the pre-pre-COVID world, sadly. Where can this take you though? Now let's talk about some of the points you have made, right? Um, there is the obvious, and here I said, get into, Tech work. Nobody knows to say developer per se app because app development is just one of the many things you can do in tech. In fact, I would say it's kind of a small bit in some capacity. That's what many people hear about. There are, we've had people in our programs who have gone up to be product manager. In fact, the first one from the last cohort that became a product manager at an AI company because they learned all the basic things on how apps work and those kind of things. And that allowed them to take their investment and apply it to this other work, right? You could decide to be a product designer. If I had the first bit, we kind of cover in a little bit. I want to be a product designer. Is that almost every time before you, all these apps that you see on your phone, before someone actually writes the code for it, someone has to design it first to make it look good or how it's going to look. It's a role called product designer. And many people who are coming from the creative side, they kind of have an eye for what makes things look good. They might not be as strong as writing, you know, a lot of technical code and whatnot. And this, they just naturally fall in this capacity. And that's one of the rules. There are individuals who they never write in code per se. They're not even designing stuff per se. They're just making sure that everybody doing this stuff gets their job done right. And this kind of a little bit of where AWS falls. Mm -hmm. That makes sure that, you know, I need a laptop or the application on my laptop is working for what the company wants. And these are diverse rules. And if you go into this, our 20 weeks program, there's many of the stuff that we even go deeper into about what those roles are. Now that's one of the options because we're just getting started. Now, if you already have a job, you know, working somewhere or you have a business, learning many of these ideas would actually allow you to do things faster and easier because you would just, in fact, when we get to in the next 
10 minutes, you probably actually know a lot of things that let you just do things a lot faster. And that's just 10 minutes that we're gonna spend here. And of course, with many of this stuff, when you learn this, you can be a freelancer, share many of these things with folks while charging them to have you do it for them. Mm -hmm. To be sure, to the point that you've made, you can start your own app-based business. I think we already, already spoken to that already. And in 2023, and this way I want to now just pull the micro app. Let's just get some definition on the way before we get some done. If you are starting an app-based business right now, okay, it's no longer the place where you want to build the next Facebook, you want to build the next Instagram. All these platforms are large. You can compete with them. The smart folks, what they're doing is they are building apps on top of established platforms. Mm -hmm. This is actually the idea of what micro apps is. So you find a big platform, and I'll pick one since you spoke about the fact that you want to first build apps and APIs. One of the biggest folks in this space, in at least in videography and photography, is kind of like Adobe and their suite of services. A lot of people actually have gotten quite comfortable just building plugins and plugins and just micro apps for After Effects. So they Again, they know a problem that exists, maybe because people need to create a, a sound effect or effect, and it's very hard to do. They know how to code, they know the problem. They just build a small plugin for After Effects. After Effects, again, they're not trying to build After Effects the app. They never try to build a website where you could sell you know, After Effects uh, templates or whatever. They just build a plugin maybe that solves a small problem, and they just say, hey, they charge people $2, $5 a month. Now, even if a thousand, a hundred people are using that, that's not trivial money. So let's be on that last sample of a micro app that you build. Shopify is a big stop in the comment space. In fact, that alone will have gotten quite well. If I'm just building an app for Shopify, maybe one that allows you to calculate currency. And they charge seven dollars, six dollars, fifty dollars, whatever per month. So maybe you don't have money to pay for that, right? So the, if you are trying to start an app-based business, some of which I will show us of course how to find many of these ideas, is you want to think about what are those platforms or those places that already have a lot of, they already have the audience already. Right? And this is actually great. Again, if you already, if you are part of the products of the capacity, and you say, okay, I'm going to build something that solves a small part that they're not tackling yet. And you become that is the micro app idea. For many game developers are making a lot, they just build a small game on Roblox and they charge a bunch. <laughs> they charge a bunch of stuff for it. That is exactly the concept. And I'm sharing the new way of thinking about if you do your app based business. Because many of this, by the way, requires that you know a few things and a few tools. What are we going to build today? So I, we're going to quickly walk through building an app like this. So we found out, right? We've done, we've, you know, we guessed, you're not gonna be some from scratch, it's pretty friendly problem. So, okay, there's uh there's in the, um, all this website where you can find jobs in the capacity. And you might say, hey, people probably have to go to LinkedIn to find some jobs, they have to go to you know LinkedIn or indeed or kind of find out. You can say, hey, we need to build my using all these people's uh, stuff, and just be the place where they could find all the jobs from all these developers sites in one place. That's kind of a space we can do here. We're not going to go that deep, but we're going to go to the first step of that, right? Keep in mind, I'm not actually trying to build a new job content thing. I'm just finding something that exists that by using, and I can narrow that a little bit. So since we since this is about building apps, I have a small screenshot that what we'll end up with. You just need to know three things. And this is the whole three thing when you're starting to code. Either you are doing it for someone, you have been employed, or you are doing a lot of those things I share with you. The three skills we'll pursue is how to research. And many of you have probably used Google, I'm sure. I hope. I mean, if you've not, you have not we take it on Google in a minute. And how to design 
Again, we're not necessarily going to be doing hardcore graphic design. We'll show a trick around that later. And, uh, and a bit of coding. Remember, we started off with that we're not necessarily trying to be hardcore software people. We just want to know enough to be productive. We want to know enough to be able to type those novels in our head, if you will, or to work at a place that is producing great novels. That's, that's the concept we account for so. And we're gonna take, these are the three things we're gonna to do to get us from point zero to at least an app that is usable. And as we go into this, I'll be talking, talking to us about all the tools. I'll be introducing them tools to us. Many of them might be new to you. Don't worry too much if you're not familiar. I'll kind of give a cursory of what they do. You'll see me do some quick use of them. You take notes. You will have this recording if you prefer. I will send this slide with some of my notes that you can refer to later because I'm hoping I'm going to share a bunch of things. If you have a laptop, this is why I have you have a laptop. I'm going to actually have you go into those apps yourself, create an account. Everything we're going to be doing is going to be on the web browser except the last bit. Create an account for some of these things and be sure you can actually use them because that's all it takes. You will see me use them and you're going to be able to say, okay, I see all, how this all fits. Then you go home or wherever you're going to be, try them yourselves. You can supplement with YouTube videos, but at least you have the context. Because here I'm going to cover the big ideas. We know where we're going, and I'll kind of walk us through that journey of how we get there. Step one, research your app. And in here, we're going to use two tools to do this. Is anyone confused by any of these tools? Anyone know these tools? I think we're going to end the fight tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a research phase, by the way. And I will show you how you would use ChatGPT to and Google to be search ideas. Now we're going to do the first thing. So while I flip to now this, we're going to now do some research for this app on a bill. I'm, a, I'm a kind of assuming that I'm from zero. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm kind of just confused. Or oh, I'm never going to show how to code it. Uh, I do not code it for sure. <laughs> no, no, that, but I was just clear my head of what I want to do. Because oftentimes when you're solving a problem in coding, it's, not, it's often not very clear. And many of you who are here, either your coffee business, or in this case, your agency, you would have a few ideas put in your head. It kind of helps to clarify your idea before you start building things. And I'll show you how we do that. And while I flip my screen to us to do some quick research, I would like, yes. I have a quick, quick comment. Comment, yes. Um, I'm not friends with Chad GPT anymore. It became my enemy when it told me my profession would be obsolete in 10 years. I, I will show you. So I, him I, and I, we, we've got some issues. Today, today after it. today, you will see how we're going to be best friends with Chad GPT. So if I, that's the reason I have them together, because they kind of serve the same point. Google did, I mean, people were afraid of Google when it showed up, thinking that, you know, key libraries and books would be there. But quite frankly, libraries are doing even better than Google showed up. Google did start out with Dow Show, Google, but in 1993. <laughs> they are different. <laughs> so, be sure, I know. Uh, however, what I'm saying here is that many of these are tools. And if I'm going to show us how to use them as tools, and I'll show you a lot of very powerful ways to think about Google. I'm sure everyone should Google, but I'll show you a different way to think about Google or how to use ChatGPT. So if you have never, I think everyone has it in Google, <laughs> so google.com, if you have not used ChatGPT for a laptop, you are going to now go to chat.openai.com. I'm going to go over there in a minute. I'm going to sweep my screen because I want to go through the... Do we have internet access? Yes, so it's right there. It's Ulam. Ulam Wi-Fi. Ulam Wi-Fi? Um, so the website I will be going to, which I will show my screen in a bit, chat.openai, yes. So, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I want to clarify where I'm gonna be building. And very quickly, <clears throat> what I'll do here is I'm going to, I'm gonna mirror my screen a bit. So this, if if you are, I, actually you can do this on your, if you're, ChatGPT works on the phone as well, by the way, Google works on the phone as well. Um, so you can try out some of the things I will be doing in a minute and i 
I mean, can you work from a website or do you have to download the app? You can work on the website. So if you have an account, it's going to ask you to create an account and it takes about five minutes. Or oh, actually less than that. Sorry, no, five minutes. Okay. Website the that, so the website you'll be going to, which I will. I would want to wear my spot. If you can, while I switch, just very quickly, it's going to ask Bobby for a number. You give it that. <clears throat> Okay, no on display. So you should have, so if you can see my screen here, you should have a site that looks like this. So the, I'm going to drag this to the corner. So you should have a site that looks something like this. Chat that open AI, and yours might be clean, yours might be um, have stuff on the side, depending on where, what if you've used it before. But ultimately, this is where I want to go. So what we have here is chat. I'm going to just leave this chat.openai.com. Now, while you're opening this, I'm going to start from Google because often I will actually start from chat GPT. I'm going to invite you. I'm trying to just get it back this long. Everyone can see my screen okay? Can I open up this first one? Yeah. It probably should be the first one. Yeah. What I want to share with you is when you think about chat GPT almost as you would think about Google, right? In my case here, I know how to build an app, right? And again, I wouldn't necessarily go through the interface. It's about everything you would try. I would try some things. You would try it along as well. But I will kind of just take you behind the scene of a few ideas. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. Good? Yeah. Okay. When you want to get clarity from chat GPT, don't do what everyone else does because you are here today. They might come here and say, and they will ask ChatGPT a question or how do something? They might something like um, um, suggest, oops. They might something like suggest an app and below right there, I'm typing what is called the prompt of what I'm anticipating ChatGPT to do for me. Just typing it there, suggest an app for a job seeker, right? So many people do this. And if you notice, you know, ChatGPT comes back, it suggests a bunch of things that in apps you have. This is actually not good. And it's not good enough for us. It shouldn't be for you either. It would looks like ChatGPT is doing a bunch of things. You will see how we can do a little bit better to clarify our thinking. Now, what I would do is at this point, I'm gonna say, when you are trying to clarify your thinking or when you're trying to ask ChatGPT for stuff, you always want to have child GPT assume a role. Assume a role. And you will see what I mean, a role. In this case, a persona. And in my case, I'm thinking that I want child GPT to kind of be an app developer. And I'm gonna say child GPT, assume this hat of a app developer. And again, I know that this is where I'm Cheyenne, you said? Cheyenne, I'm happy to go Rochelle, okay, I'm sorry, Rochelle, Rochelle. No, I'm saying where you were getting concerned with ChatGPT, I was kind of making a point that the first thing with ChatGPT is, you know, assume a role. Like let's say you are a photographer and an app developer. Build an app that does X, Y, and Z. Suggest an app that does X, Y, and Z. And I will give you a few things that we will put in a little bit. And here we're crafting, we're actually asking more meaningful questions. And we are making child GPT be a helper for us to kind of clarify our thinking. And of course, the reason I'm saying as an app developer is because you know that people that build apps are app developers. And you won't know that you will get best response from an app developer if you're asking them a question. So I would ask child GPT this question differently. I would say you are an app developer. Well, I'm, I'm saying you're an expert app developer, app developer. Right? 
this is the role that Chavis is going to have. And I would say, using this expertise, expertise, give me the top feature of an app for a job seeker. If I let's make it more specific, because the more specific you can be, the better, right? Give me an app for an entry level, entry level job seeker that is easy to monetize. In fact, what I'm typing here, it can also be a question like I'm doing a Google search, do the modern way. I have it as a role, then I give it a task for you to do. And I said, as not developer, and I would say, am I spelling my time correctly? Like the director doesn't care. And I would say, and, and this kind of an agile thing you should do, and suggest the best platform to release my app on. Okay, let's go back a few things. Because I've introduced a few jargon there. And I want to clarify for us. I first asked that, hey, I know I'm not a good coder. I have this expert coding assistant, and I'm saying, assume that role. Then this is the other night. I'm not saying using this expertise, often when you are developing an application, every app will have a bunch of what is called features. Features are the things that the app can do. For example, if you're using Instagram, you are able to DM, that's a feature. You are able to scroll the feed, that's a feature. And if I went to do response, you'll see what that means. So every app will have features. Right? So I'm saying, hey, give me the top feature of what this app should have. Right? And here I'm now, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in more specific. Here, of course, you have done some research and I'm saying, hey, I probably want it to be not for any job seeker. I want to be maybe someone that is doing entry level. Because one thing, if you're going to get Google response GPT, the most specific it can be, the better in your task, or in this case, your ask. And of course, and I'm saying I want it to be easy to monetize, in this case, for me to sell the app and whatever platform or suggestion there. And of course, what the best platform, platform is what I mentioned to us in the beginning. Platform could be where your people will be able to see and use your application. Sorry? How is it cheating? <laughs> so it's one of the things where it's like, so typically in a situation where you don't have a correct understanding of a market, this marginalizes like your need for education on the market. It marginalizes your need for like any type of education. Actually, I, I would show how we now take this and actually go to Google because this is just a starting point. If that's why I have my other tab here because this is a starting point for us. And I will show how we get clarity very quickly because this kind of narrows down to your point a bunch of things. I think that's kind of know the fundamentals of, okay, what's the task? Keep in mind, I, mean, I wouldn't know the actual question to ask. <laughs> Hello, that's our president. Hope you all enjoy the first the workshop. Hope you all start the next Have a good night. I mean, I got to thank you. Yes, for some. So notice that what I put here is the only way to actually ask a question that gives something more meaningful is that you kind of have a knowledge of what coding kind of is, what it means, what platform means, and about what I'm kind of sharing here by sharing with you. I know what platform is, I know what an app developer is, I know what is what feature of an app means. Now this way. Now you can actually just substitute a bunch of things for whatever app you're thinking to, and charge it to the GV. Hopefully, let's try it. It's not working. If I if I give if I enter this, notice what just happens. Notice what ChatGPT suggests that we should do. I get much more meaningful response. In fact, I just me that it recommends that I build a mobile app, right? And if I scroll up, I wouldn't go through this because you're going to try this yourself. Try a bunch of ideas that you have in your head. And I will share what I typed in. And you can substitute a bunch of things. Let me just scroll up. Now we can going to respond. It's telling us that the top feature that would be easy for us to sell is for us to be a resume builder with 
temperate. As in Ebola. And of course, it explains why it thinks that this, and if I say enough things that will have to contest suggestions, covenant abuser, export, ex, uh, export and sharing, and some feedback, these are the top things you say our app should have. Notice that this is a better, and they say this is how we're going to sell it, right? Advertising, selling the templates, sorry? If you don't, if you're able to get away, then you're strong. No, the Wi Fi is fine. It's just my phone is crappy. So, this is my mother's phone, and they went and let me use my Google email and her phone. Okay, we so, can, we can. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, it's so, like to chat. Okay. Yeah. So hey, do I you have a laptop? Do you have a laptop? No, I don't have one with me. I no, 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 at home. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, just take notes, take screenshot, I mean, take photos at home on a laptop. Give it a try. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, switch that. Yes. So, I use, so, what, because I use Bard. Okay. Versus chat. I was using chat GPT when it first came out. Right, right. And I found that it, you were feeding it information. And it was learning from you too. Oh, right. But when you, the information you put in, how can I, as a, I'm going to call myself a seasoned worker. Okay. Okay, because I'm pretty much older than probably some of the people in the room, maybe not. Yeah, so how best, because I've, I've been there, done that, yeah. but how best, um, we're all here for different reasons, mm -hmm. but what's the best way I want to get the most? Because a lot of people are using chat GPT. It's amazing. Yes. All this thing just blew up. Mm -hmm. But I want to find that niche and that I'll, can apply to me as an older worker, because I have a lot of competition. I, I remember, and I'll come to that. If oh, I, I, I don't get that point. Notice oh, that. Okay. I, what the question I asked of Chat GPT, oh, yeah. right, was I included a question about how I can do something using what I have domain knowledge about. In this case, oh, to piggyback on that. So, for example, the question I ask here is that how do I solve a problem for people who are entry level job seekers? Oh. If I was a career coach, for example, uh -huh. right, I might know a lot about people looking for jobs and something to me. And I can say, okay, how do I, I didn't know these people are having a lot of this problem. I don't know how to approach it. And I can come as Chai GPT that, hey, Chai GPT, let's say we are doing an app. Oftentimes, app is the easiest way to automate a lot of for folks. I can say, hey, you are an expert developer or you are an expert career coach. Suggest, I'm just saying something now, suggest, for example, an easy solution to problem X that I can easily monitor, right? And it would go something like this. Or I would say, hey, you are an expert marketer, right? Suggest the best way to sell blah, 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 being a problem that you've noticed based on your domain knowledge, maybe that works for this kind of people. You know, and you have that. And the good thing about we're not going to go through because there's a follow up course that I go into how to do automation, not about coding, that we have a workshop we have in the future. So there are a lot of ways. And that point actually more that answers to automate your work and, you know, come up to speed, you know, to use AI to do a bunch of this stuff. But this we just use an idea to get us going. But there are a lot of ways to use that. And if you notice, Chat GPT is only as helpful as the question you're asking it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't actually know the right question to ask, you're just getting a bunch of junk. And that's why you see that like, put a lot of junk because you just, I know we started from the, the first thing you actually asked, this kind of junk. You just give us a very bland response. And when we find that question, right? Which I find here. So this is the first thing we we'll ask. It's just an app for a job seeker. So you're saying the limit the word you use will be very specific yes. to a to a mechanical to, 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 non human like but yeah. well, not not mechanical, but if you give it a lot more context oh. that is based on your human knowledge. Yeah. Because that's actually the that's where chat becomes very powerful. The same as Google, you can Google can give you, which we kind of take a look at on some very powerful things we can type in Google that kind of does something similar, not as clean as this, but it then doesn't have the context of the problem. And that's where your human expertise comes in, where, in fact, all it just takes is, again, the evolution of why people are, things like this makes it actually easier for folks like yourself to even get more independence and ideally more, uh, what I would say, uh, 
the next thing that you can think about is that you don't actually bound about the fact that maybe you don't understand this tech thing. Um, you might have the young guy that might know the tech thing, but they might not know enough domain or human knowledge that you have had over the years where you're speaking to your human, excuse me, and you understand all these things. ChatGPT, for example, I just use yours. I wasn't sure what your domain was. ChatGPT is not as in figure out, maybe doesn't know yet how to use, maybe after effects, all this stuff. You maybe have not sat down for hours and figure out how it's for you to do motion graphs and get it right. But you can actually ask it, but you have complained about it quite a bit. I can come here and say, as an expert videographer, let's say I'm thinking about apps to build, to solve this problem. You know, I know be the micro app. And this an, you are an expert videographer. Share with me the top 15 problems of being a videographer. This is second point. And I can start going there. And say, okay, share with me the top 10 features of using After Effects. And the thing is that very quickly, it can tell me all is good, is great on the whole internet. So it knows all things I've said. However, I know the questions as it for it to actually, this is where the human and the expertise comes in, for it to give me something meaningful. Does that make sense? Yep. The great thing about it actually is that once you craft this, the rest actually very is actually kind of simpler, to be honest. Because did I answer your question? Pardon? Did I answer your question? Oh no, definitely. So so now I ask, I said suggest an app for this, and I got all this kind of junk. And when I give it more clarity, it gave me something a little more precise that I can actually now start working on, so to speak. So what did you put more clarity? What did you put so this that, that was that was this this prompt type. Oh, you guys, uh, that's a lot though. Yes. yes. Oh, work at Excel, uh, um, Microsoft Excel. Yeah, like, what do you put in it? What do you get up? <laughs> because it, it already has rules that understands that right. it's like looking for. So you, you just you gave us like a script to like plug and plug. Did you have to remember? Often. So it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity, not a threat. And I'm invited to see that such because after I have this. Now, I've very quickly narrowed in what I should be focusing on. Because now I figure, okay, it needs this. And what I can come here today, I'm going to just copy this, right? It says I should, the top feature I should really focus on is a resume builder with premium templates. That's what my app should be about. If you don't know what that means, I'm going to copy this first thing, you know, lingo here. And it says these are the top things my app should do provide AI powered content suggestion to help users craft effective and tailored resume. Sounds great. It sounds like a problem. We will have taken in the past, like taking many, many hours of work to know that it's actually a problem or to figure out that it's something I should do. Okay. If I come to Google, I'm going to just paste this. Up. I want to watch something very closely. So, what I always do, if I just type resume builder with premium templates, of course, this doesn't make sense. Google will probably give me a bunch of things. But if I come here and say, Resume Builder with Premium Template app. What I'm actually doing here is I'm figuring out what are the kind of app already doing this. And I'll show you, and I'll tell you the reason for a minute, in a minute. See, if I click on this, I can already see that the suggestion I get here, I most people actually don't know, but I'm going to just share this with some small secret with you. That if you have a problem and you type whatever in Google, most people actually just either I don't it's not showing ad but you, you get a bunch of ads so I kind of don't need any ads so this is the first result in Google. Almost all the time, it probably helps for you to look at that first result. You have to do research, and the first with one to five because almost often Google is actually telling me it's actually confirming what ChatGPT is already saying that if you want to solve this problem, let's get the Google Apps Store. It's told me a few things. It's let me know that most of the folks who are entry level job seekers are probably Android users. And you want this to be on an application. And number three, I probably might think about the fact that I can't really know how much I can probably make if I build this app. Well, $1 for now for this, you know, that is selling this application. I won't go deep into that, but you can kind of build the app and see how it works, see what it's doing. They kind of all have the same stuff. And here, they have Resume Builder. This is Apple App Store. So it's saying that if you have to focus on an app, how do you do an Android app first? And it's how you kind of see what others are doing so that you can reverse engineer it. When I say reverse engineer, it's that you see what other people are doing, 
in how they are making money, mm. and you can figure out what, how can I do something similar and something different. And it's actually works. Sorry, real uh, quick. So you want to you want to look at how people are solving a problem, see how they're solving it, because success kind of needs fear. And just do the same or similar. You don't have to invent this world. It's kind of hard to reinvent anything. No, to be honest. You just have to know all the tools that you're using, all the frameworks you're gonna share, which I'm sharing with you here, and figure out either you or someone else doing it. Does that make sense? So we figure out what we're gonna do. An app, mobile app, Android, whatever, doesn't matter. Now you we know what we want to build. Now. Let's get to the design of the application. We've had some features that I want to do, and I'm going to stay in Google. The next thing we'll do is to design the application. The number three is to code it. And you would think, I don't know how to do that. I want to share the same with you. Don't worry. I will share this more quickly. Because what almost everyone does is A, I want to introduce you to what has become in the web development world, the number one app for designing web application. Not coding, but designing web application. And that app is called Figma. Now, I'm showing you Figma, and, and, and I like the illustration because that, that's actually just what the app does. It's kind of like a drag and drop. Think about it as Microsoft Word, but for designing web application. So you see what you can see, things look pretty, you make things look pretty, this is like a web app, and you can kind of drag things around and make it work. Now, I know you're concerned. When are we gonna start learning this stuff? This is ridiculous. Where would I even start? Today's your good day, because. What's the difference between this and that Canva? Okay, so Canva is for graphics. Mm -hmm. So I want to design posters. I want to design uh, maybe social media stuff. But this is if you want to design digital apps. So in this case, Instagram, like your Instagram, like when we are building software applications, the app you install on your phone, several apps that you have. The first step before you've done the first step, when you saw the app in the first place, you just try to get Google. The next thing that you are now have to design what that app will look like. It's not working yet, just design. And that's what they're doing here. So the person behind the scene is designing that this should have, it should be like this. When they've designed this, they will now pass it on to someone to actually now make it come to life. So that's a step. The app that most folks will use to do that design is this app called Figma. That's something you can throw at your mm -hmm. kids' face. Oh, I'll have to do it for my boss. Yeah. And you know the great thing? <laughs> After today, in fact, in, in about five minutes, you're going to you're gonna know how to use this 100%. You don't believe yet, but I'll show you a small little secret. So you know the app, if I know the app now, you know, app called Figma. If you're on a laptop, I'm gonna invite you to go here and create an account. You don't, you know, you can don't maybe you shouldn't do this, you don't be so about it, right? So I'll take you to an account, let's see, okay, just drive it down. There's a sign up box in the corner here, and then it's yeah, this app is free. So you put your Google account, we're gonna bring you in. We're not gonna do that again because we also have one other thing in our platform. We're gonna put that out now. You don't have all day to learn how to, you know, maybe you don't even know how to make this look good, right? Because a lot of work, well, I mean, to be sure, we, we, we know we have to do the work. However, once you know that there's something called Figma, we're gonna go back to Google. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, we're gonna actually delete this. And actually, since I want to do, want to do a, job, uh, a job app, I'll just do some, a small sample. I will say mobile app job mobile app. Now, this, I'm using the keyword I want to now use. I'm doing plus, and I'm saying this plus for a reason. Figma. Figma is that app we just looked at. Templates. Now, before you think, let's decipher what I just typed in. So what I said is that Google, you can't do the chat right away. It's like Google. Like, we figure out what to do with activity, ideas on the app we should have. Now I'm saying, Google, I want you to give me a design for an app. In this case, a job, a job, I should do a job search mobile app. 
and I want to give me Figma. Figma is that software. I just read it. And I said template. Now, not, don't confuse it for the templates we just saw. Templates is kind of like, think about it as blueprints. So many people who are expert designers, they will create what is called templates for Figma that people like yourself can just grab and start using without having to design, just move a few things around and you click the I'm going to show you all the page you need to make in a minute because we're going to grab the template. And we actually see, and this will actually get you in the But don't get in the So I'm going to type in a Google. So what we're going to do, we're going to say, hey, give me some templates. I will enter. Ultimately, notice, so in fact, the first site is Google. I mean, it's Figma itself. If I click on this, notice what I see here. This is, if you just take a look at this, this is a completely designable application. In this case, in the Figma app that you could just, you know, click. If I click through this, I'm not going to open this because we have one already. I'm going to share in a minute. And this actually has the app completely, completely designed, already looking good for us to start playing around with. One of the sites I love, which I will share with you, we can take a look, a look at later, is a website called uiart.com. And this website, what is that is, is that they have about 23,000 design resources. In fact, if either you're looking for your coffee website, you are looking for a mobile app, they kind of have the design template, the Figma, which you can just grab and convert into and you can customize what you want. In fact, let, let's start from here. I'm going to go to web template. I can just go to um, I'm going to type here. Let's just do web template. And let's, for example, say, I'm going to type, I don't know if they have it, but let's type coffee, right? So if you notice here, they have, in fact, I didn't, I didn't pre-plan this, by the way, so let's, have, then let's set this up. <laughs> but if you notice, Julian, they have this completely designed coffee design that you can actually grab this and just put it in Figma. Figma is that design. And Figma is actually very simple to use. You just drag a few things around, customize things, change this to what you want to say, and your app is kind of good to go. Or your website, in this case, it's a website. Or in my case, if I'm looking for a job, I'll go to mobile UI. So let's say I have a mobile a app idea. If you notice, I mean, if you have a coffee, you don't have a coffee one. But notice these are kind of like, these are all templates. In this case, pre-done design from top to bottom of a complete app that you can just download. Some are free, some are paid, and you can just customize a little bit. If I want to build a banking app, for example, if you want to do an NFT app, I can come here, download this, customize, put my company name and logo, and my design is back. What does it put in the chat? Let's talk, let's think about that. So let's, I'm going to here, I'm just going to type in, let's type in job, and here, we're going to move this out of the way. So they, I'll just grab one here. So they have, you know, similar to the app we're working through, they have kind of this, I'm gonna scroll down here. They have this Figma design app. They have this template already pre-designed for us to just download and start customizing. Now, before, if you didn't have this now, you not taking many First you first learn Figma, learn how to be a good designer, figure out what looks good and what's kind of thing. But that's been kind of benefit as well. And if I, this is just one of the things, if I want to start learning how to use Figma to design mobile apps, it's only stopping you from offering that as a service to people, even though that. I say, I'm a, I'm a product designer now. And I say, well, you're going to come see me, you're going to talk to him, and if you want to be the company, you're going to hear what's going to say. I said, no problem. You come here, collect all the money, you come here, find a template, customize a little bit, and say, work is done. <laughs> <laughs> so, what does Figma look like? So, I've downloaded one of the templates. This is Figma, by the way. So, when you log in, which I invite you, I'm going to share this template. If I'm hoping that will be the nice take home, I will share the template with you. You're going to customize it to your company. Just walk around it. And you will get this template. You start using Figma. This is where the insomnia comes in. Create an account. I'll give you this template to start working. This is actually a complete app. If I want you to notice here, if let's say I want to change the go to, if I let's go at ChatGPT, maybe I want a fancy name for my for my uh for my new company or this is my new app. I will just come back to ChatGPT and say, you are, we're gonna use the same thing here. You are a an expert brander. You are a brand, you are a branding expert. Okay, branding experts. 
And I would say using this expertise, suggests, suggest a name, suggests a beautiful, we can also type this, app name for, for this, for, for this, for this product. I'm just saying give me an app name and I will give you some parameters because often when you are naming your app, you want it to be short, you want it to be easy to pronounce and all these kind of things. It should be, it should be short and easy to pronounce. Sorry? <laughs> no, it's giving you context. So if I if I put this, hopefully we'll see what this brings back our way. Because I need an app for my with the name. Um, it's a, you should call it skill script swift. So you know, grab. So it's suggesting that as the the name for our app. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying you just remember we ask you that the people that the app should be for earlier. And now I'm just following up with it, asking a follow-up question. Right? You are, right now you are no longer a developer. <laughs> you are now an brand expert. You can need it for my app. And it's saying that certainly beautiful and easy to pronounce app product that's important for brand and app. And it says, especially if I'm targeting app seekers, it says I should call my app still suit. And what I would do, of course, is very quickly check that no one has that name. If if it if it's actually a real thing, or if your boss asks you to do a brand and stuff, skills skillsweep.com. That's actually a great name. Though that's already well, it already kind of exists. <laughs> so I will have to say regenerate, but I'm not gonna go into all that. But I'll call this app. Let's give this app a name. I will go should we go too far. I will come here and just remember I just double click this and I just type in skill swift. In fact, it's how easy to use figure. And I'm done. And of course, it can be the same. I can click here, drag this around. Actually, I'm drag here. I can make some updates, come here, click the color. And you can play around with many of them. And in our true, as you're going through, if you choose to, in our 20 week program, you are actually going to build the full app, many of them. I have many of these factors. And that's actually just one design, that's one skill that you're asking it in how to do it. The more important thing for us, by the way, is that after I have this template, this actually it has everything, this is the login page. In fact, all the app you see is start from here. So this is the log. Again, all the pages that these are these are core screens, all the screens that this app is going to have. What they often do is they're not going to do what's kind of called prototype. Prototype is where if you notice I have this stuff here. So if I click on prototype, don't worry about many of this. Again, you can review this is recorded. If I just double click this right here, actually, I'm going to go to this. I can say if I click here, I can say when someone taps on this, I'm just dragging, I'm dragging that arrow. And I just point it right here. So I'm saying when someone taps on this, it should go to this page. Mm -hmm. uh, I can say hey, when someone clicks on, let's go all the way. Let's say when someone clicks on login. You know, so when someone clicks on this login, there's this button, right? See this button right here? Can I see my screen? And now so when someone clicks on this, I want it to go to maybe this page or this screen. And this is actually the visual way that we're just connecting. Keep in mind, you can't cheat it. All we actually just did is did some search way to find this template. And if you have a different brand color, you can customize it, but maybe you may know, you have the energy. Now we just say, okay, let's on the app or something here and it goes here and it goes all the scores. Now, 80% of the work time. Never find it. You can't do this by the one, but you have to do You have to do this, 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 this pig mask, but you have to do And I will share, the, this template is also you can play around with it. And when you're done, what will happen is you can actually even preview how this will look. If I click on this, for example, what I click there, by the way, is I just clicked on this play in the corner. I notice, by the way, many of these things, you will already kind of be familiar with how it looks. I notice I have this stuff that looks, this, this is called a prototype, which is a design application that just looks like the real thing, but it's not really working yet. Mm. And here, you can actually do the best thing, right? You can say, we've designed our app. Please give us some money. And they say, how does it work? Oh, of course, good news. And you can come here and say, when I click on this, if I click on this, I click on this. This is actually the things we just drag. It goes here, and actually we didn't do that yet. I'll actually go and do it from here because we had this all wired up. So I will come from here. I will click here. And I'll say, play. Refresh, refresh, refresh. And again, you all will be able to do all of this. 
because all we've done so far is just ChatGPT did some research, done some Google, downloaded the template, brought it to Figma, and we start customizing applications. And here I can click on next. I click on this next, it goes there. So this is where I'm logging in and I'm here, right? And of course you can do this connection in the application. And Figma is the app that allows to do all this. And you might say, Bill, you have a VCM code, yeah? When is that going to come? I'm glad you're Because I thought it's coming. But it makes sense so far. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have a design, you've connected things. Everything's looking good and pretty. Yes. Oh no, I was just thinking of something. So the second page is basically yes. where you design right. the templates and everything. Am I correct? Yes. So what I did here is I have this, these are all screens. So the screen is every page on the mobile application has dedicated screens, right? And when you design the app, then each will have their own screen. Oh, the only reason I asked it because I was just trying to picture um like what he was saying about the guitar people like his pictures and everything like how would he design it? Like how would it actually work? Like, if he's using his own creativity, like how would you use it? You can yes, you, you, you can do that. Apps. However, you, know, you can do that with you. And this is where often when you're learning something, I mean if I in, in the creative world, they would tell you that if you want to paint very well, you kind of need to start making the masters first. Mm -hmm. And look at what done that way. That's kind of the idea. Where you want you first, if you want to get the market, then acquire acquire skill very quick, which is kind of the world we kind of are, where you don't have years and years to acquire a new skill. We almost have to learn quickly. So a quick way to learn how to do the web is to kind of just see how professionals are building. So let's say I'm not that professional. Let's say I'm, I figure out I don't really like. I've learned enough. I don't like how the front end colors look. Well, it's coming and it But I'm not starting completely from scratch. Where I'm saying, okay, what color would well with this color? How should this be? How should the this color is called typography? I don't worry about that. I get to the result and walk my way back. So I start from thinking about it, I start from going to place of the interview, workshop the masters, and I start crafting my invoice as I get better at handling brushes. Understanding color and contrast and this kind of thing. Now I can go wild after I figure out this thing. However, I'm not starting from you figuring out color combinations and color theory. Does that make sense? Yeah. And into this one, because to the point you made, when we are doing work in tech, you will be expected to acquire no one skill but seven. And the short for the exposed now. In the best way to learn very quickly is to just start at the end and walk back. And I'm sharing with you how to design without really going to any design school or being a graphic designer. And in fact, I think we all will agree that our design kind of looks good. <laughs> right? So we went from, I mean, I, I know it's my scared folks, but when so far we've kind of done the job that we have taken probably five people doing full time. About five days, six years ago. I've done this in less than an hour. And what I mean is not that those, those that have lost the job, the argument do those jobs is not being lost, but they, are, they will have to transition because things expand. Those that would lose are those that don't want to face the transformation. And I'm inviting you to face the transformation as we started out. That it's not a case of they come for a job. But it's an opportunity for me to expand in our new territory. Five months ago, nobody knew how to use ChatGPT. <laughs> now, there's a people whose full time job now is being ChatGPT expert. I'm saying, okay, so apparently it takes just about five months to become experts. <laughs> <laughs> However, they saw the future, they embraced it, and they used their domain expertise to remix. And to present something new. And that is the world we are living in. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. now, let's get to the coding because we're going to start from the end again. Now you have this your Figma stuff, right? It's looking good. Now you might say, now nah, I have to learn code. After all, the is saying I should come to this 20 week stuff and learn how to write code. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how to write code in about two minutes. Almost like Figma, there is also an AI app. And I will just, I, I, again, I kind of shortcut process here because I don't want to copy and paste. We're running a little bit low on time. I hope it's not, I hope it's okay. Five more minutes. 
finally. Yes, yes. What I actually did here is I took this design and if I'm going to do it here. I came here. This, this stuff allows you to install what's kind of called plugins. Plugins are apps you build on apps. So in fact, the point I'm making, this Figma is a very big, is the biggest in design. People are actually making money building apps on top of this itself. The micro app. So one of them is this app called Locofy. And can anyone guess what this app does? What this micro app does? Can anyone guess what it does? And if I just say it takes the news and turns it into code, and you'd be 100% correct. Mm -hmm. It takes all this design and it converts it into a mobile app you can use to. Oh, what is local five? Why actually how it works? Local five actually does this. I'm gonna just go to the website. Um so if I can come back here. So this is Locofy. Locofy is called locofy.ai. Again, your work is going to be, you would take that template, I'm going to give you, or grab any template you like, any Figma template you like, and you're going to customize it, give it your fancy name that you've just suggested. And use Locofy, it's going to take your design, Figma, and you're going to turn it into code for the web, if you want, or for a mobile application. Would be a mobile app, or you can and you can actually what it does is just right here, as you can see here, it takes a Figma. And just if I scroll down for now, you know, a lot of these companies are using it. They are using it. So it's, it's not just some very really secret situation. Everyone behind it is using it. The company knows that I'm right here. I know some of you are surprised, but that's why you're here. <laughs> it's not even that. It's that like the businessman in me is like, wow, I can completely undercut application developers and tell people I can develop applications at a lower price and a faster rate. In fact, that's why you're here. So, if, so we can head there and everyone can go home and you have app developer. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So what are, what are, what are these things? Oh, these are the companies you know. They just showing companies that use them. This is the app. This is the app itself that does this. So, we've, so remember, by the way, we have gone from finding some design Customizing design in Figma, and now we're also writing code. Code. <laughs> so when I grab my design, I grab it from here, and I drop it here, and it just converts it. If I if I do this preview, by the way, and if I'm going to run it a little bit, so you can try it on your own app, in your own phone as well. Ah, uh, well, you can do this now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so you have, so. This is kind of what the app looks like a little bit, is taking it from that. Now, I'm gonna come here. Now, in fact, the only thing you have to do is to know how to click a few things. I'm gonna keep the screen right here, right? For, for just a few minutes, right? If you notice, this is our design. I mean, if you might look all this stuff that's kind of jumbled up a little bit, and you, you won't be wrong that I actually could. I'm gonna give you five minutes, but how did you drive the, the application from Figma into Oh, uh, actually, no, so, it is, so if I come here, the way I did it is I typed a command. This is compound P. I just bring up this command palette and I selected this app. The app is called Locofy. It's inside Figma. Locofy is inside. Figma. Inside Figma, yes. So if I just enter this, if I select that, it brings up a box, which possibly, oh, there we go. So see right here. So what it's doing, I can just click through this. And if I say sync to builder, it sends a design to Locofy's website and it converts to this. <laughs> None of this stuff existed before. Who was hand making all of this stuff? I mean, we made that app. It's just like certain people like me should never have used this device. Well, that's so. So you, so you're lucky that you get. Yeah, absolutely. Because Doctor Stephen Jr. is still because it was this is obvious to me. Right, it's free to you. You have to do, but you have the opportunity. So not time making this, but I don't want to skip that. Now, I'm gonna go back to local file. If I come here, and I'll wrap up shortly. If you notice, this is our app, and these are all the stuff we're going to do because you're going to do it yourself. A lot of you are going to do the app this week. 
<laughs> so this is the code. I didn't write any of this to be sure. This is just got me to. And when I'm ready to get this app in the app store, let's say because I'm free, I'm just juggling along. What we come to that in a little bit, I can just kind of click here and it has a bunch of things you can export it to. And I'll keep this screen. What you notice, what you notice is that many of you probably don't understand all these things that is on this option, right? If you don't understand what Snack is, where this is going, what VS code is, maybe you're actually looking at this. And you might say, maybe I would maybe actually be nice for me to understand what this is, right? And that's what our twenty eight is about. It gives you the context, not it, it gives you empowers you to understand what this is. Maybe not because you write it to be sure you're gonna write it about things. But remember, to be an expert painter, the account helps you can look at a great painting and reproduce it. But eventually, sometimes you might say, you know what? I want this to be great or not great. It also helps, of course, that you can always have a reference. To go to. But even if, and again, remember, I'm always starting with that the goal is not for you to be a software developer, but to algorithms. Imagine if you have a bunch of ideas and you can build five apps in five months. They might not all work, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you only need one of them to work. Are you right? Right? And you can eat away very quickly. You can go from zero to the other. And in our 12 week program, of course, we're going to do apps. We just built one another hour. We're going to go a little deeper where all these options, I explained many of them. I saw my colleague over there. <laughs> <laughs> <You're really happy. laughs> um, we, we, we talk about it. And ultimately, you now look at you, you understand how to even go deeper for example this app let me just scroll down here this app right, right now you might this is what is kind of called i've done i brought the code down to my computer if you actually scan that QR code actually where i was saving it if i actually scan this you can actually run that app with yourself on your phone if you scan this stuff so however you have to go to ULM stuff, last week have some stuff, but you can try it on the phone. Now you might you don't know you may not know what this is, right? Or what is this on my corner, right? However, after having all this, that is what we empower you to do, right? You can go this deep, or you can be high level, but you end up with having what will be the Typing of the future. You said if we go to this uh, QRC, we can open it? Yes, if, if I'm going to ask you to download an app that it does. You cannot open an Expo issue 692. Okay. You might need to download an app called Expo, but we can come to that later because there's just an app that it will run inside. What does this enable us to do with the scanner? It gives you, it allows you to preview that app to use the app on your computer. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. Sir. Just to clarify. Yes. If I make like a, a 30 like screen thing on Figma, yeah. Mocha 5 is gonna is gonna turn it into a code. That is answer. correct. So for example, I so this app that we had, the app that we had a little bit ago, I just exported a few screens. You know, this is one, two, three. But if I go back here, if I want to export everything, if I do the same thing I did before, this is the app inside of uh Local file. This is Figma. I have the choice. I'm gonna come right here. Go down a little bit. I'm gonna select this. These are all the screens, right? I can just select everything. I just selected a few, and I can just say. You can select the screens. Yes, you can select the screens one time. So if it's not working for you, don't worry. Right now, it's going to. So when you're in big box, yes, when you say to uh, drag and drop that stuff into local buy, you can only use those two things together. Like so yes. my, my 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 platform I work off of it is 
Excel. I created all of this on Excel. So I wouldn't be able to cut and paste that into something like this. No, 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 no. Because if you're doing apps, you have to use the right tool. Okay. So Figma yeah. allows us to design this. You can design mm -hmm. it like this in Figma. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, in Excel. Yeah. Right. So that's a little bit of the things you've been practicing because mm -hmm. again, you go for you, it's not as easy. You don't have to design this from scratch, but it's then how to use this. And it's a key thing. I can't tell you can call yourself. Then what I advise you now to do is to now take this and be a coder. In case you grab this and you send the local file, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about the other because look, because when Figma does it, right? Figma's an application where as long as you design the element, Figma makes all the elements functional. And then that local file thing writes the code for you, right? So you can just put it in the app store after that. It's the, I don't, I can't rather watch it. Uh, well, because again, that's where it's all about the, the power of knowledge, right? Or the, so, and when you, and to, to the point, when we are uh, in the beginning, where I said you can either do your work efficiently or you can choose to be a freelancer or you can be an app developer and more. This enables you to do all this because you can, to your point, you can say, I'm not developer now. And you just find a bunch of templates, customize it to whatever you want, and be working. And in fact, a lot of people even go as far as they could because people charge a lot to just do figure designs. So, how do I take something like the formulas and functionality of Excel and make this adapt to get to something like this that in, in terms of the outcomes that I have with my stocks and stuff makes it function. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There might even be a feature where people are using Excel to figure mm -hmm. and they might be able to just convert all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember when we talk about doing some research? Mm -hmm. It helps for you to see whatever you have in your mind. Go to chat GPT, mm -hmm. go to Google, See, that's why I started from that part first, mm -hmm. because you don't. The, we, are, we are ending here, mm -hmm. but I'm inviting you. Even though it's attractive as my view, you never want to start. Mm -hmm. You first want to figure out am I on the right path? Yeah. Clarify your thinking first, mm -hmm. because more and more the execution is getting simple. Mm -hmm. Right? What is that get more difficult is figuring out what that problem is. Or the right content, but it might be using chat GPT or some other or bad or some of that fancy stuff that will show up in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, humans will still need humans to solve human problems. So that's why you want to be a human and let computer does what it does best maybe creating code, maybe creating good design, and you figure out your own expertise, right? Which might be or which is either using your domain. And transferring that to other humans solve their problem. And you having these toolkits, you can execute efficiently. Mm How -hmm. does that feel? Mm -hmm. Maybe overwhelmed. You said what? <laughs> so, so it's great. I, I mean, I, I wish I. Uh, if you want to own the short contract information, yeah, I would like to do that. I would I mean, I love to so, you just, you just, well, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna deny it. <laughs> so where do we go from here? Yeah, with you. Yeah, I don't know, but I still had a small little um the part about the phone and the phone for the signal. Yeah, so if we go, I'm gonna scroll for the app. For the app, yeah. So what happens if I, I brought this design to Figma, I mean to look by. So go five east. So you didn't have to type on this. I did not type on this. Oh, okay. It, 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 it took I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it took my design and wrote the code for it. <laughs> now what I'm sharing. So, so that so that did not come from the chat GPT. No, no, no. This is the big one. Okay, right, right. This is not so chat. GPT does not do, does not do this. Yeah. Yes. So how does this look like? Like ownership of the like oh. once the code is you, you own you own it, yes, you own it. Because if you, that's what, what I was showing here, the sync, you have the capacity to take all this out and you own the hundred percent of this stuff. So, so, so there's no dollars right? in the entire world. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. For whatever the China 19, 20 or whatever. Oh that was on my mind too. That but yes, but you you they, they were actually get transferred to you. What's the difference? 
So, so I don't I don't see that one because I had an idea of something last year. I didn't yeah, try. so keep in mind by the way, if you if you have ideas of stuff, no, I can I can this so many times. Those start from coming to Figma on level five, step back a bit, do some research. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to clarify, to clarify your thinking. Then, because it does not share this framework with you, that this execution might not be like a level daunted by, ah, oh, where do I want to start writing this code? How do I want to design? That's one way. Come share this high level that the world is not evolving. You. That execution as it is getting simpler because of where you're coming from. After a week you know, of many of you know do this stuff, you can maybe you don't want to continue, you can hand this over to maybe someone that's been coding for 20 years and you can have done it for five minutes. So the the playing field has kind of been leveled a little bit. However, however, as you know, the details matter. I've shared the broad scope with you. But why is it important to dig deep in real things? Is because, of course, you want to understand what all these terms mean. Because a lot of these terms, even though it makes it simple, they make an assumption that you understand what code is, you can understand how things look or how things should look, right? They make an assumption that you, you can be looking at Figma, for example. They make an assumption that you actually know how apps work on the web. That is kind of soft assumption that they make. And that's what we help you do when you dig deep in the program. So if you have not gotten on the wait list for the simple program, I invite you to. Because in an hour when we got here, imagine what we can get from some things. <laughs> yeah. Are you signing for the training? There is a there is there is a... so you have a young family that was sixteen. That's a different thing. That's yeah, that is but I receive on the list list. Yes, because the program is transitioning. We're trying to turn it based to a specialist. Can you design? Can you design websites on Figma and then, uh, I know, oh, I know how to create local five code. Yes, let's look like those websites and you laugh. It doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's Figma. Yeah. 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 I mean, so yeah. that's going to be our time for today. If you want to sign up for the simple, we have a we have a program. I mean, we have the stuff in the corner. If you haven't gotten your time yet, uh, I will be. If you have signed up with your email, I will be sending. I will be sending the templates. I will be sending my the slide deck that has the notes. It's gonna have all this. It's gonna have a link to uh, many of these apps. I will also include the Figma template. I will invite you to sign up for the Figma account. Use the template. Customize it a little bit. Build your app, move some people out. We might have problems. So we get that if we sign up, or we get that because we get to Because we can. Why should I say you sign up? I need to sign up for you. Yes, yes. I, I, I mean, if you don't sign up, I need to do that. So I don't need to sign up. I will So, because I'm saying this to the email. I need to sign up for the But you have to sign up for the course. No, that's not for the course. That's just a, that's the that's just you know marketing material essential. So oh, you sign up. So we can get you email. We get email, email, so we can send you follow up. And then we can say here's okay. a freebie and if you want to take the class, you know, do this other thing. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Because the class, you don't just get in the class. There is a small success. Yes. But this is just for if now you sign up for the class, you just will get have your email, so I can give it to send it like this too. Okay. We need to go send the email saying to all the colleagues signing for class. For your 20 year old, maybe maybe not see them yet. So uh, I appreciate your coming and I hope you found it. And I'm hoping we all accomplish our goals. That we said first. We're scared. I can see it. I'm walking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So when does the class start? October 23rd. October 23rd? Yes. For 20 weeks. For 20 weeks, yes. Thank you. Wow. Awesome.
and it's in person? It's both. Over long and it's in person. It's hybrid. So, it's hybrid. Hybrid. 